Well, apparently people like me to discuss fictional weapons and their practicality, or lack thereof. And in general, I prefer to talk about something that I've actually handled myself. Unfortunately, a viewer from Alberta, Canada has sent me this for review. Was kind enough to lend it to me. This is a Klingon MacLeth. Uh, unfortunately, I can't name the person because I can't find his message anymore. I've been looking for it, but it's nowhere to be found. It might be buried under a ton of other messages. I just get too many every day. And uh, he hasn't written down his first name, only his last name on the package, so I don't want to mention that, of course. So, uh, yeah, I guess thanks to Anonymous for lending me this. And don't worry, I do still have your address, so I will be able to send it back. The uh, larger brother, the Batleth, has been one of the most requested weapons on my channel to talk about. And that is one that I'm really not interested in, and I most certainly am not interested in spending money on it, because so far the only replicas I've seen of the Batleth have, have been, well, cheap wall hanger replicas, non-functional, made of cheap steel, and that's just not my thing. I'm not interested in that whatsoever. And also, from looking at the Batleth, it doesn't seem like the most practical weapon design to me. It seems like the kind of weapon that basically forces you to adapt to it rather than the weapon benefiting you. But again, I haven't handled any replicas of it, so I can't say too much about it. But since I have a MacLeth in hand, I can say a thing or two about it. I have, of course, seen plenty of ludicrous and impractical and, and just nonsensical weapon designs in movies and TV series, but uh, this is actually not too bad. It's, uh, yeah, it looks fancy and everything. At first you may go, what the heck is this? But uh, it does actually make sense. There is one thing that I'd like to get out of the way immediately, which really bothers me, and that is the handle, or I should say lack thereof. Because at first I actually thought that this was unfinished. It was just kind of a hasty improvised wrapping, but I have looked up official pictures of MacLeths and well, apparently that's what Klingons do. They just wrap it in some leather string or, or some other material and then just call it a day, which seems very, very odd to me and very ironic considering that it is such a high-tech scenario where they have access to all kinds of uh, quality materials and, and all kinds of manufacturing processes that would enable them to come up with something more elaborate. And they could have gone for something like this, which is an actually ergonomic handle. The thing is, ergonomics apply to humanoid hands across the board. And Klingons are not so different. They have a palm and four fingers and a thumb. They have pretty much the exact same kind of hand as humans do. So ergonomics apply to them in just the same way. And this is ergonomic. It even has a palm swell, which actually fills your hand and gives you more to hold on to, makes it more, much more comfortable to hold on to, and uh, also prevents your hand from slipping around, all kinds of things. This is a useful, practical handle design. This is just a half-assed <laughs> hasty job, basically. Just wrapping something around that that's not okay. If they had put some kind of handle scales or whatever on there, just something to increase the thickness and then wrap it, that would be fine. But this here is, that, it just feels horrible. But let's move on to the pos positive things because that's pretty much my only comp real complaint about it. The uh, blade is pretty functional. It's reminiscent of a kukri in that it has the same kind of inward curvature, which is quite useful in a draw cut. You can imagine if I hold it in the same spot and just keep drawing it. Yep, yeah, there we go. There, the edge contacts the material and it will bite pretty deep as you're drawing. The uh, other thing is that it has a flared out blade towards the end, which it makes it kind of a sword axe hybrid. It means that without being as unbalanced as an axe, it still has a little bit of extra heft here, so it gives you a bit more impact towards the tip. 
but at the same time like i said it's not poorly balanced the uh point of balance i think was around yeah it's a bit hard to do that basically I have to balance it on the edge on my finger which is not too pleasant but yeah here we go it's uh not too far away from the guard even though considering that there's not too much left of the blade it is kind of a compromise it is far enough towards the guard that it's not super tip heavy and clumsy to, to use but it's also far enough towards the, the t well it doesn't actually have a tip but you know what i mean that it gives you a little bit of extra chopping power it's not that heavy the material is not overly thick so it is a pretty agile weapon you can actually move it pretty easily you can change direction quickly so really not a problem and um, you still get quite a bit of power here i have also seen one version where the the point here is much more pronounced so this would actually make for a good um, anti-armor blade even though armor doesn't seem to be a big deal in star trek hardly anybody uses it the klingons i'm not sure if they actually use armor or just thick looking clothing but yeah might be handy against that would also be a pretty good impact device against bones and such also it has an edge on the back here which that is something that i i always like if you strike at your opponent and you miss you can just come back right the same way and maybe get them with the backside or you can attack from unconventional angles do things that you could normally do if you only had that one edge so yeah there are definitely some advantages to that personally I, I would prefer if there was a point it's not strictly necessary there have been plenty of blades throughout human history that didn't have a, a pronounced point but personally i like that because it's always good to, ha to have the option for thrusting in a fight which this would be not effective really you could do it but it, it really wouldn't do too much then you have the guard here which um it's not bad really it's it acts to protect your hand of course you can with this u-shaped piece here you can actually catch an opponent's blade which i guess that pretty much only becomes relevant against other klingons because well most other opponents that they're dealing with are not using blades and uh, by the way i'm not going to address the the entire thing about how strange it is for someone to use blades in a setting where everybody has ranged weapons their <laughs> uh, rifles and pistols and whatnot but uh, well it's a klingon thing and that way they can always claim that their opponents are cowards which is good <laughs> i guess and um the thing is with something like this if you are dealing with ranged weapons uh, in the hands of your enemies as soon as you get close enough it's it basically becomes butchery because they won't be able to defend themselves all that well um they don't have bayonets on their rifles or anything so at that point it just becomes a matter of just cutting them to pieces and uh, this part here comes in handy in very close a very close distance grappling range basically you can do a draw cut with this or push cut and you know push against their throat you can you could jab this into a red shirt's throat <laughs> and uh yeah it's it can definitely definitely come in handy offers protection also offensive cap capabilities it's also sharpened here which um this wouldn't come in into effect all that often although in sword fighting pommel strikes not a pommel but you know what i mean uh strikes like that are fairly common so if you were to do that this oh well, obviously this wouldn't be lethal by any means but uh, it wouldn't be pleasant so yeah i can see why even if it, if it doesn't come into effect all that often it's not a disadvantage so whatever so yeah overall it's uh, really not a bad design it's um for the intended purpose close quarter combat 
on, on a ship, of course, you also have the, the advantage that you're not destroying everything with your phaser fire or whatever. So, um, yeah, I can definitely see the point of that, even though it doesn't have a point. So on this particular one, I like the finish. You could kind of imagine that it was some kind of exotic high-tech alloy. Yeah, or maybe it's just a fancy finish on some made in China steel. <laughs> Cheapo stuff. Made in China. The Klingon equivalent of China for the budget-minded Klingon. <laughs>